everyone. This is Chris Keys for PremierGuitar.com. I'm hanging out with James Valentine of Maroon 5. James, how are you doing? Excellent. Thanks for coming out. Iowa State Fair. It's going off. <laughs> it is. It's about to go off. We are just listening to 50 Cent, so we interrupted that so you could take us through your pedal board. What, what, what do we have down here? Um, we got a lot of stuff. It's, it's kind of a strange setup, um, but it's, it's worked out pretty well so far. I guess the, the strangest thing about this is that I'm, I'm running through the matchless head and the divided by 13 head at the same time. Okay. And I've got these two guys set up right next to each other so that I can switch from the clean channel to the dirty channel at the same time on both amps. So I hit both pedals at the same time, or I can have one of them on clean and one of them dirty, which gives a good sort of variation if I want to go halfway instead of all the way distorted. So like, I've got the clean here, you know, which we use a lot all night for, you know, stuff like the... For those funk sort of riffs. Uh -huh. And then I can go to the more riff sort of stuff like... And then the Matchless has an extra channel that I can kick on for even more gain. And so that's kind of, it makes it kind of complicated. And if you see me during the show, I'm kind of tap dancing a lot. <laughs> I probably should switch to some sort of MIDI switching system to simplify it. But in certain venues, I'll find that uh, sometimes I want less gain. So I'll just have one of the amps on gain and one of them clean. And some venues, uh, every night's different. So I like to have that flexibility gotcha. every night. I see two things I got to point out real quick is I see the OCD and the blue collar both have tape on it. People on the internet are always uh, accuse artists of taping up their uh, settings. Uh, so that'll be the first thing I'll address. So I'll let you answer um, that. Well, that's just because I tend to kick these knobs around. If, if I'm switching it on and off, I might accidentally hit that uh, you know, before a solo or something, and then all of a sudden it's completely different. That's the only reason my so tech... I'm not hiding anything. I'm letting you guys all the way in. Ask me anything. So let's hear what they sound like. Okay, so this is more, I kick on the OCD more for like the lead. So that's more of like the, the total lead sound. Um, this Octane is really cool, which is from Zvex, and I use it on about like four bars in, in a song called Never See Your Face Again, but it's got a really cool effect because it really breaks up. It's got like tons of overtones and stuff. Um, let's see, you know, the, the Line 6 Delay is, is just so versatile. Um, I use that all night and uh, I just basically have two different delay settings. One's uh, just a slight delay, you know, with the mix not that high, and then the second one's a little more dramatic, and then I just tap them into the tempo of the songs first, you know, like. You know, for that police sort of thing, which we do a lot. Um, and then one of my favorite uh, chorus pedals, and I guess... Uh, one of the only chorus pedals that I have on here is the Dunlop Roto Vibe, which has always just been my favorite swirly type of effect. Did it tap into your like Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains? Tap into that kind of. Yeah, area. yeah, that's probably uh, I because I, I I've had this ever since the '90s. It was probably partly influenced by that. Um, and not, and not to stereotype you, but I am I am surprised to see that you have a Zach Wild Wah. Yeah, you know, we we tried out a lot of different wahs, uh, me and Mike Buffa, my guitar tech, and we found that this one was was just the best. You know, I love Zach Wilde's playing, but, you know, I don't really play anything like him. Yeah. But it, it works. Um, what does it f uh, do for you, then? It, well, you, you know, every wah has, like, a different sort of uh, range that it sweeps from, and this one just had a particularly good range, and, uh, you know, it just works for the type of stuff I, I use it for. I use it on the song Sunday Morning. You know, so um, it just it just worked. So we we went with it. Um, 
we've got the noise suppressor on here, which helps. Uh, you never know. A lot of these stages can be really noisy, um, so that helps a lot in between notes because you know we'll have a lot of dramatic pauses. So if there's that extra hum in between, that is, it's annoying. So that's good to have on there. Um, let's see what else. The wah wah, the full drive. I mean, I've got the blue collar, the OCD, and the full drive. Just basically, is different flavors of overdrive. Um, but I, man, I love the OCD. I always end up. You kind of like religiously set to your pedals, like you know, for a certain song you'll click on the OCD, and another song you use the full drive and, and like the refrain or chorus, or or do you kind of kick them on from night to night and change it up? Well, I kind of change it up because we play so many shows that sometimes, you know, I'll solo, you know, on the Octafuzz because you'll find that that'll inspire different sort of ideas. Um, my sound guy would probably prefer if I played the same thing every night, but you know, it's, it, it's a little more fun to experiment sometimes. And you do get a feel, like I said earlier, you get a feel for the room and sometimes certain things sound better for whatever reason. We added this because we had this song uh, called Give a Little More uh, that was a single briefly and uh, it had this intro that had this part which had a heavy chorus and this octave effect. <laughs> Um, so we needed to add that pog in the chorus, but we had a pretty clean signal path going through my board already, so we built a whole nother loop that uh, when I click on this bypass pedal, it, it goes through that. Otherwise, it's not going through all these extra pedals. Because we found, you know, like, as soon as you add anything else to your signal chain, you start to see the signal degrading. Um, and we went through every pedal here to make sure that there wasn't any degradation. You know, all this stuff is true bypass. Um, and even stuff that claims to be true bypass, a lot of times, is you still get some signal loss in there. So, so we built this extra loop, but I just ended up being inspired by some of the sounds, especially the pog, which led to some other parts. Um, you know, it's just fun to play with this octave. <laughs> That's just fun. And also this chorus is just... You know, I think chorus is, is about due for a comeback. You know, that sort of like, that shimmery. You know, I love that sound. So I throw that in sometimes. Um, and I don't have to worry about it degrading the rest of the, the signal path, which is good. We saw what the Telecaster can do. What else are you using from a night-to-night -night basis? This is one of the main ones that I use. It's a Fano. He makes awesome stuff and custom made this one for me based on an old silver tone. Uh, you know, it's got the sparkle. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of like a weird jazz master, firebird sort of thing. But it's got the P90s, which, um, or just sound really awesome. It's the way that they break up. Because uh, especially when I'm playing, you know, these big sort of uh, distorted choruses, I think the P90s, they sound bigger than just one guitar, you know, if you really open it up and the way that it opens up with the matchless and the divide by 13 stuff. Sounds sounds pretty huge. So I love the P90s. Yeah, it's got, that's like on the, the old Silvertone that he based it off of. I don't know what model of Silvertone that is. This has become one of my favorites. I mean, I was looking, I've been looking for a good, like, vintage 335 for a long time. Um, and I mean, for years. But I've been, like, holding out for the right one. But <laughs> then uh, one of my friends had one of these I-35s from Collins, and I was really impressed. I really really love it. It it sounds great. It's really warm. It's got all those those good 335 sort of characteristics. And it just, it plays really great, really balanced and sounds great. What songs are you using uh, this one for? This one I'm using it right now on She Will Be Loved cuz uh, it starts off with just Adam and I singing it so it's just sort of guitar and voice. So I have it on the neck pickup and have a pretty jazzy sort of sound. It you know, it sounds like, like more of a jazz box. And then by the end of it, you know, I kick it down to the bridge pickup and open it up for more of the traditional rock, you know, sort of big distorted sound. So it can do all that, which I'm very happy about. 
for our live arrangements of our songs, we drop them down a half step, uh, which makes it easier for Adam to sing. Uh, so, so for all the main guitars, the Tele and the Fanos, I have an E and an E flat. And then... This is a, a new one that I'm just starting to work into the set. How did this one come about? Another one from Fano. Um, I mean, I love those, uh, the other ones that he's made me so much. I asked him to, what else? What kind of things were you specifically asking for in this one? You know, for this one, I was kind of like, I don't know, let your imagination run <laughs> wild. What do you think? Now that, uh, you know, you've, you've heard some of our music, what do you think? Uh, would be useful to me and it, it's got the p90 in here and the tv jones up here so it's a, it's like a slightly different flavor but it's got that awesome fano vibe i just love it and you prefer the unfinished necks yeah i like that feeling better it's just sort of smoother yeah. it's just easier to play yeah this is a new model that they they just started making and it's always been like uh, getting good acoustic sound live has always been an issue yeah. Um, but this has been really solid, and it's got the Fishman Aura pickup system in it, um, which means I can just plug it straight in anywhere, and we've used it on a lot of uh, these random gigs that we play where we just have to plug straight into a PA, and you can still get a, a pretty good, consistent sound plugged in, which is hard for acoustic. When you're getting them, you know, setting up with a Martin, were you asking them for any presets with the Aura or anything, or are you just kind of getting a stock uh, instrument, you know, since you have certain things you need well, tone-wise? We actually, we had them model one of my guitars uh, that I had at home that I liked recording with, and so they actually took it into the Martin factory or wherever they did it, and they actually mic'd it up and sort of modeled the characteristics that they heard in that. Um, which was really cool and it ended up sounding like that, but I think we've ended up falling back on some of the presets that were, were included uh, the first time around anyway, so. So this is done, uh, done well for us. And for your electrics, are you using any certain types of uh, string gauges, you know, are you changing that up with the tunings or? Um, I use 11s pretty much consistently. Um, I just, I started using 11s uh, when I was younger. I was trying to emulate more of a jazz tone, so I started leaning heavier. Um, you know, and they're heavy enough to to have that fatter sound, but they're still light enough to to be able to do the the rock and funk stuff. Because if you get too heavy, you you don't have the the snap for some of that funk stuff. I don't know. There's guys who probably disagree. <laughs> probably think that 11s are are weak. Yeah. <laughs> Too light, or something. too light, but that's uh, that's about right for me. We have uh, the the two heads here, the, the combination that I use, the matchless and the divided by 13. And what's cool is is we have them wired in to have backups. So if either of these amps fail, we can instantly switch over to the backup. So there there doesn't have to be any disruption. But that hasn't really happened. I think only one time do we blow a tube in either of these. Which one do you kind of consider your main one in terms of, I guess, which one do you use more? In ter you know, I know that you had the switch up front you showed us. Which one are you, you kind of leaning on more during the show? I don't know. I love all my children. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair answer. You don't want to hurt their feelings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, you, you can't pick a favorite child. But, uh, you know, it's the... Uh, they're both great, you know, and I've used them both uh, on on gigs where I can't take this this whole setup. Um, they both work great. You know, the Matchless has three different channels that I can use, so that, that can be handy sometimes if I want to switch to the lead. Um, but then what we have happening back here, the, uh, the amps that you actually see on stage are actually dummies. Um, be, because starting on this tour, we finally gave in to our sound guy who's been asking us to face the amps away from stage because we were blowing out people in the front row. <laughs> so we actually have the actual speaker cabinets facing uh, the back of the stage, which has given him a lot more control in front of house because we, you know, obviously like to run the amps pretty loud to get that sort of vibe. So I have a divided by 13 cabinet and a matchless cabinet. They're both 2x12s with open backs. 
So what do you got mic'd up here? Okay, so on the divided by 13, we've got the SM57 from Sure, which is always solid. Um, but on the Matchless, we've got a Royer, which is, I believe, the Royer 121. It's either the 121 or the 122 um, ribbon mic. And they're really great mics. Um, and again, having the different mics on each of the cabinets sort of mixes up the sound so it sounds uh, bigger when, when you combine them together. All sorts of different kinds of music that you're playing and finger picking throughout the set. What kind of picks are you using? Well, um, the picks that I use, I've got like, I'm always kind of changing that up. But basically, when I'm, when I'm playing like the funk rhythm stuff, I found it really useful uh, to turn the pick around. This is a standard uh, Dunlop Tortex pick, but I, I actually play it with the rounded side. Do you think that gives your rhythm. tone? Well, I, I think when, when you're playing with the rounded side, you hit the strings more evenly when you're doing the more of the rhythm type of stuff, which I think is useful. When I'm playing with the sharp end, it's, it's almost as if the, the pick can get stuck in between. Um, but when you're with the rounded, it can hit everything more evenly, which has been useful. But for lead, I like these these weird little jazz picks. Um, like broken off fingernails. Yeah, exactly. Um, but this is actually the the Dunlop Ultex material, which I don't. This material I just like the sound of and the way that it it bounces off the string better than the than the other ones. But for this, you know, it's it's a sharper, more detailed sort of sound, which is better for lead. So sometimes I actually switch between rhythm and, and lead, which can get complicated, but... What cables are you using then? We're using Mogami cables. And why not wireless? Wireless, I have not found a system that doesn't suck away the tone. It totally alters the sound. I mean, wireless would be a lot more handy. I used to love to run up and down around the stands and stuff, but it, it's, it just will absolutely affect your tone. Are you a tone snob? I mean, I... I'm an aspiring tone snob, you know, like, I, I, <laughs> I, like I'm not going to take anything away that's going to, you know, I'm not going to add anything that's going to possibly degrade my tone because it's, you know, it's a lot of hard. Fair enough. It's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of things to consider, you know, so. All right, James, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope, I hope that made sense and is helpful at all. I think we'll piece it together. Great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone, this is Chris Keys for PremierGuitar.com.